is not you know, a favorite frame for developers. But uh, before that, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Quincy. Okay, <coughs> it's pretty slow here, the wi but anyway. Um, I'm, I'm now working as um, DevOps security in a security firm called uh, Sabra. So um, I'm not going to talk about Porter tonight, just give you a brief uh, introduction of myself. So I started my career as a developer. I've been a um, software architect for a few companies. And I also switched my focus uh, pretty um, like eight years ago for infrastructure. So I helped uh, different organizations to uh, manage their uh, IT infrastructure and uh, development operations. And, and now I've switched my focus to security. And uh, as a security firm, I talked to um, you know, compliance guys, auditing, uh, auditor guys, for consultants, etc., to ensure everything is compliant, there's no hacking or whatsoever. And um, my latest focus is the sum of it, all of them. So, the depth of security is my, now my focus. For those who's not very familiar with DevOps, let me um, give you some contents of it. So, DevOps is all about velocity. So we want to make things fast. Say for example, if you want to make development, you want you will definitely use you know uh, testing tools, right? Do some unit tests, recovery tests. Um, but it's okay, you do the system integration tests for whatever system you want to integrate. And probably you will have some nightly view, you know, regular view, maybe weekly view. Um, with different tests, some stables, or uh, uh, and the development, uh, well, don't try it out, tag whatever. So. You will enforce a lot of automations in this procedure. You will talk to operation teams as a developer, okay, how things are, de are deployed so that we can automate that. Um, we will do some automation tests. So those unit tests, so uh, uh, SIT will be automated such that we can, you know, um, go to our goal to have the resources team to deploy our system in a much faster way, a much faster speed. Like um, you know, for business guys, they want to like hear terms like time to market, you know, increase this value, things like that. But this is why, and it's all about collaboration, just like what I mentioned. Uh, okay, so DevOps security or DevSecOps or DevOps Set, uh, whatever we want to put it. Basically, it's all about three teams: right, developer, operations, and security. The thing is, the reality is, okay, although we are all nice guys, okay, we all work as a team in organizations. We have different KPI, we have different measures. So when we have the end of result from our boss, okay, we do a performance review, things like that, we have different, you know, um, parameters to look at. As a developer, we all know, we focus on all the functionalities. We want more functions. You know, to be implemented, to be deployed, we want less bugs that we appear. We want more less fixes like that. So we want a time to market and more more updates. However, security is always you know a burden, an additional requirement. Imagine you have a simple system like, like a web portal, talk to the database. It could be very simple. Um, then in Python, you may only only take you maybe less than a day to do so. But what if a security team guy told me that, okay, you need um, your TLS encryptions to all the connections out there to implement whatever SSL or encryptions that you want to do. Uh, the users need, need to have two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentications. Uh, maybe you need to verify the identity and things like that, the biometrics, not parameters. It makes things very complicated. If this is not what we want, what not your platform. So security guy is not Always our best friend. And if you look at operations, they have different um, uh, measurements. So they will always want things up and running. Okay, no downtime is what they want. They don't really care about those uh, functionalities and things like that. What they want is stability. Okay, no hiccups. Users happy. Operations are happy. For security, same. If you employ some, you know, security enforcement to the infrastructure or the system deployment, system will slow down because you do encryptions, you want more protections, you want streaming, uh, the system it do more work. Things will slow down and the performance uh, kind 
kind of uh, operator concern, you know. If things are slow, you know, users will come to operators and they don't like it. So, certificate guide to operators, not always um, the best idea either. So, what are the parameters or what things the certificate guys are looking at? Okay, why they have to be the bad guy on? At least not so bad guy. So, there are not a lot of matrix. One of the number matrix is what we call CIA, okay? It's not from Analytica, it's basically the term for confidentiality, availability, and integrity. Um, because we have a short session today, so we are only focus on one thing, which is confidentiality. Basically, what I focus today is the API key, the password, that the system <coughs> talks to each other. It may be deployed in the DevOps pipelines, so if you want to trigger some testing tools, those testing tools need to reach out to your source, right? You may, you may source your source code in GitHub, in GitLab, or in big buckets, and like that. And those systems need to grab all the source code. They need to talk to it. That means they need to authenticate with it. They need to use a password, make a certificate, or API key to log into this. And this is not the nicest thing in the world because the security team will always look at the news. And the news is not so, you know, the reality is not perfect. I will give you two examples. Okay, so um, uh, at the end of August um, in Shanghai, they have a large you know hotel chains called Huadu. Not sure if you heard about it, but they have a lot of uh, hotels. It's more like more almost two thousand of them in mainland China, and they got hacked. They got they did. and you know uh, from the news, what it said is the developer oops, um, uploaded the information to GitHub. So people download it, we sell it. It's kind of cool, it's like five bitcoins. Not too bad, not too bad. It's whether the time will become very expensive at that moment. And another example, come on. Okay, Uber. Okay, everyone heard about it. So the latest update is they, uh, they are defined by the state government for one, where's the number? Okay, 148 million US dollar. This is a huge number. So they, they always got the data bitrate. So it, even back to like um, 2014, they got data leakage um, from GitHub. And this is a screenshot that I, I took last week. Yeah, last week. So basically what I do, did is log into GitHub. I guess everybody heard about it. Do a search. Take for example, I just go to search some keywords like AWS, Secret Team, or SSD. If you love Azure, do Azure. Or, you know, Alicow, uh, Google Platform, whatsoever, any kind of database name that you would like. Do a search. You can see about 6,000 commits, uh, commits about those keys. If you click on it, um, it's quite easy. I'm going to guarantee if you can spend five minutes, open one or two pages of the result, you definitely get a handful of plain test security in AWS. But please do not try to connect to it. It's a pretty much a crime. Okay, please do not do that. Okay, but uh, you can do the search. Do not connect to it. Okay, or consult your legal consultant before you don't do it. It's not my fault. Okay, I'm not the one saying it. So, so this is the reactions like you know typical security guys looks like. They freak <laughs> out. They panic because of the news. Imagine if you, that organization, if your organization got rich, got a sound of cyber attack, who are the first one to be brained? This security guy, okay? They have freak out. So what they want to do is they, they want to deploy an extra security requirements to all kinds of your systems. Like, okay, if you got a password, like Watu does, like Uber does, please change it frequently. Okay, you need to enforce all kinds of security controls like access control, who can access what, who can't access what, uh, all the law of visibility, I want real time visibility, who is using what resources, I want everything to be true, you know, keeping it in a secure place, nobody can change it, things like that, a lot of system integrations. It's not, you know, there's a tons of work to do if you want to do this. And even worse, after the security that being bring, they try to do the investigations. Use the first thing they will look at is who got the password, who got the information. 
Oops. Developers like us got the information. We need to develop things, right? We need to connect to the database in order to do the queries. Otherwise, how can we develop? Operation guys got the password too. They need to deploy the, the production database, okay? The production resources and things like that. They also got the password. So potentially we are all the good. Okay, we are all the suspects here. Okay, not good. So how can we, you know, simplify things? That's the main thing that's in the mind. Um, in Canada, this we call wear the hammer, okay? Protect yourself, die to fight, okay? How can we do that? Um, I have some suggestions for you, basically based on two uh, open source solutions um, from uh, Sarbrock. One is called Ponder, it's a security management tools. Another one called Sequelus. I'll go with a little bit details today, uh, if time's allowed. So for uh, my recommendation, it's simple too. Use the security tools for security. Don't try to invent the real, try to, don't try to implement yourself. Secondly, do not own any non personal password. That is, apart from your password to log on to your own PC or laptop or desktop or the one to check your email, try not to own any you know, shared password or administrative password, such as like that, especially for database or cloud assets. How can we do this? Let's take a look at one by one. First one, okay, um, let's share a challenge or, or um, when I talk to my customers or peers in DevOps, there are two main challenges. And let's see how we can do this. The first challenge is there are lots of tools in DevOps. When you try to automate things, okay, if you Google, um, there's a lot of, lots of systems in the world for automations. Um, Who is using DevOps here in the room? Okay, that's a few, not too bad, <laughs> cool. Okay, I'm not gonna ask many questions, but um, say for example, you will have a source control system to source the source. You will have, have some automation tools like Jenkins or Enterbord and Puppet and Chef to the other kind of different automations. And there will be some tools like uh, Maven or, or different kinds of uh, testing tools like uh, Sonic Proof, et cetera, test your systems, source code. Uh, whether your living convention is correct, whether your um, you know, you can hack up anything which is not supposed to be appear in the source code, and they can trigger all kinds of deployment like packaging to library. And uh, I got a, a simple example um, as a CI/CD pipeline. Um, it's utilizing uh, all these kind of tools for uh, a Docker um, applications, basically as a container. Um, so even if a small pipeline like this, from a given PC to a testing environment. I've already used like 10 or dozens of systems. Okay. How can you control all this? This is some nightmare. Another thing is, not only pipeline got all kinds of um, you know, password or secret. These kind of secrets are everywhere. Okay. So say for example, you want to deploy an application in Python. Okay, you want to, okay, you have a nice Python script. You want to build a Docker image as a container and deploy to the cloud, like AWS or Azure. You need all kinds of password. Like I need to connect to the Azure portal and the AWS portal using ATSA, etc. And the application itself also own password for the information, sensitive information. So they are everywhere. Okay, is this very difficult or I can say nearly impossible? Definitely not practical to implement uh, all kinds of security control over purposes. So um, that's why we got. Oops, that's great. Um, we got two um, uh, information that I can share with you. One is called Conjure. If you go to conjure.org, this is a secret management tool. That means all kinds of secrets like certificate, API key, using password, etc. that is being used in the application, you know, there are pipelines, things like that. We can centralize it, okay? And these open source tools can provide an API to REST API call. And you can authenticate um, from the um, CIC pipeline or the applications to retrieve a, a password or secret on that. <laughs> of course, it's got all kinds of enforcement built in, like auditing and things like that. So you don't have to be in the group. So um, I have a, a Jenkins script. Okay, this is basically the automation script um, here. So that's two versions. 
in the black box, you can see uh, the hack of password. Okay. Okay. Basically, it will retrieve the source code, and it will trigger all kinds of compilations, testing, etc. before it deploys to the environment. And it needs password. So the back example up there, pen test, no good. What we can help is if you use um, Conjure, we, we can have some tools, okay, here. We basically we remove all kinds of passwords. So for the password field over there, there's no need of put it, okay? You can improve the password in real time. That means if your security team or the guy want to change the password, if we do it, it won't affect our application. It will not affect our depth of pipeline. Okay, this is a great deal. And another thing I want to share with you is let the security guy manage the security. Okay, because after we you know deploy corner or we'll do the isolations, we basically split um, the environment into two. The one we will focus as a developer, we will focus on the feature, the functionalities. For the password or the secret of security, let the security guy to do it. So um, this open source tools conjure, okay, it can um, enforce security control. This is a YAML file. Uh, I mean, you know, if you go to DevOps security, you will always see this kind of format. And it can, you know, uh, allow the um, uh, sequence of duty, sequence of data, and also allow the security team to manage all kinds of security controls, like what kind of applications can be true, what kind of password, okay. Who can access what? And it provides a nice UI. And uh, you know, sometimes the security team, um, not all of them like CLI. Okay, e developers is okay for coding, a lot of words, uh, less graphic. But those auditors, security team, or compliance guys, they don't like that. So it provides a nice UI if you want. Uh, to address it, for them to use. But uh, to me, CLI is okay. So this is my second um, recommendation. Uh, if you dive into the, the another one, another focus, which I just shared, uh, is do not own any non-personal password. <coughs> so after you use corner, all this kind of shared account, or administrative account, or application user account, will be so centralized mm -hmm. in Conjure. So basically, you don't need to know any about it, okay? What you need to do is the power of it, or where you want to you know, enforce it. So um, this is a Python script. This is a Python event, right? So how do we do this? Say for example, I've got an application needs to you know, reach out to AWS. I need a single key or SSK, okay? How can you integrate it? It's simple. You can follow child factors, applications, and your design patterns. I mean, some of you may have about it. It's a design pattern. It's um, you know, mainly used in a containerized uh, applications. So if you have any password or keys, uh, things like that, you just simply retrieve it from the memory, which is the environment web. Okay, it's very simple. Just like that. No fancy code, no, no other things that you use. And Conjure can inject that kind of secret to the applications, such that your application can know, um, you know how to connect or establish the connections wherever um, resources you want to do. Okay? You need, want, you need to know the password? No, you don't. You're not using Conjure. Okay? You are not using Conjure. So, I talked a lot about Conjure, things like that. So, one of the typical questions that I you know, hear a lot from all the security guys or you know, doing compliance check is that what if there is a bad developer in the room? I know you are, you are all good. Okay. What if there's a bad developer that tries to pin out the password? They would then know the password, right? They know the password from my cloud environment or my database. Maybe I've got some sensitive information like the salary from the from bosses, things like that. I don't want that to happen. How can you do it? So here comes another open source um, project that we are developing. It's, it's later, not kind of official yet. 
but it's perfect at this moment for secretless. Okay, we don't need secret in the applications. So how things work? It's the idea is pretty simple. Um, if you got an application, usually when, say for example, want to establish a database connection, you will need to use the password of the database account. Instead of giving you the password of the username of that um, database account, Conger will develop a broker, a service broker, that in terms will generate a database account or connection or connectivity based on the Conger um, secrets, and the username password in the Conger, to keep the applications a connection. Okay, it will give you a connection instead of a password. You don't need to establish or construct I think the password is more. This guy, the service worker, will give you that. Okay. That means if there's any data breach or sub attack or whatever happened, there's no password in the application. Everyone in this room cannot and will not get any password. So you're proof with innocent. Okay. That's how you one way with a really good way to secure our applications as well as securing yourself. So um, currently what we support, um, we now support SSH connections, okay? If you want to reach out to some your know, Linux box or Linux box, that's what you need. We also support FCG authentications. That means if you're using some like REST API or you know, a standard HTTPS really connection connectivity, this is something you can provide. And it support on um, database. Currently only one database is pretty physical, um, but uh, I understand there's a developers out there it's developer and uh, developing more plugins or modules to support uh, uh, other database like MySQL and things like that. Okay. Ooh, timing. Okay. Let me wrap up by how to get started. Um, everything's online. So uh, for Conver, the secret management tools. You can uh, try it in the conjure.org. It will give you an interface like this. Okay, there's a try conjure here. You can try it on it online. So if you got a Linux box or you got a Mac or even got Windows, you run a Docker image there. You can have you download it and execute all kinds of um, information there. The secretless, you got a web page for it. It's, it's also open source for uh, it's on fader, by the way. Do not put it in the production yet. If you want, let me know. You can help. And um, I also got my lab, basically uh, some kind of tutorials host in uh, Kalatuka. If you uh, try to use it, it's pretty cool. So log the web page, pick all kinds of you know, uh, tutorials you want, and it will spin up um, you know, containers that you can access, all the command lines that you set up. And uh, yeah, and that's it for my sections. And here's my some contest for me. You want to reach out to me after, you know, on these sections, I'll be around. Uh, I heard that there's a networking tool out there. And uh, uh, before I end the sessions, any questions? Come on. Questions, questions, questions? Yeah, you need to have a question. Very common. Uh, yep. Uh, how do you compare yourself with the sequelers uh, like the fault with the that use the, uh, the hash code. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, great questions. So, hash code is focused on also focused on secret management, but there's um, different um, uh, features different for this way. Okay. Okay. So one is hash code only focused on those um, application secret. If you look at the cloud platforms, the Docker platforms, applications, things like that. Uh, and secondly, if you look at Hashicorp, they will talk about you know, moving target. Okay, how you change all kind of hardware, generate one new one for you if needed, things like that. But they also store you know very powerful parts for that. One is still um, target there. Mm -hmm. Right. For secretless, that's no target. That's not secret. So um, so this is some uh, you know, differentiator of Thank you.